Today's learning module is on palliative care and end-of-life care. Edward Livingston Trudeau said, The art of medicine is to cure sometimes, to relieve often, and to comfort always. Prior to our learning module, we're going to do a pre-test assessment, which you'll complete as well at the end. Palliative care is care for those life with life-limiting illnesses and their caretakers with focus on symptom control and quality of life. A, true, B, false. Hospice care provides comprehensive comfort care as well as support for the family while curative treatments are continued. A, true, B, false. Palliative care and hospice care are the same. A, true, B, false. Accepting hospice care means stopping all medical treatment. A, true, B, false. Palliative and hospice involves a team of both medical and non-medical providers. A, true, B, false. Hospice is covered by nearly all insurances. A, true, B, false. First, we'll go over some statistics in regards to hospice and palliative care. By 2030, the older population of the United States will be nearly 1 billion. That is 12% of the projected total world population. And by 2050, 1.6 billion of the total population will be 65 and older. By 2030, the baby boomer generation will be older than 65. This will expand the size of the older population so that one in every five residents will be of retirement age. If we look at this infographic, we can see that our population is aging quickly. The number of adults over 65 will far exceed the number of children under 18. This shows that the need for palliative and hospice care will increase. This infographic shows the difference between 1960 and projected how 2060 will look in terms of the demographics of our, our population. It is no longer that we have a small aging population. Our aging population is growing and we will need to address the palliative issues in hospice care. Older adults are disproportionately affected by chronic illnesses such as diabetes, arthritis, and heart disease. Approximately 85% of older adults have at least one chronic health condition, and 60% have at least two chronic health conditions. In 2017, it was estimated that over 56 million people were in need of palliative care. The majority of them live in low and middle income countries. Worldwide, only about 14% of people who needed palliative care were receiving it. The aging of the world's population increases in cancer and other non-communicable diseases and the recent emergence of COVID-19, the need for palliative care is ever increasing. By 2060, the need for palliative care and end of life care is expected to double. If we look at these estimates based on age, looking at this pie chart, Patients that are 50 and above, 70% of them required palliative care or are in need of it. That number will grow significantly as our population grows. What is palliative care? How would you define it? The World Health Organization defines it as palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their families facing the problems associated with life-threatening illnesses through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problems, physical, psychosocial, and spiritual. How is this relevant? Currently, contemporary medicine has come to focus on disease-specific treatments rather than the needs of the whole person and their family. This can result in unnecessary suffering, burdensome and costly interventions, untreated pain and symptoms, lengthy hospitalizations, and unnecessary emergency room visits. Also, overwhelmed caregivers and clinician burnout. The system as is results in poor quality of life and high health care costs. We need to refocus our care goals. The goal of palliative care is to improve the quality of life for both the patient and the family. Palliative care focuses on the needs of the patient and not on the patient's prognosis, thus providing quality, not only quantity. It aims to decrease the overall burden that medical conditions impart on the patient and care by comprehensively addressing the physical, emotional, and spiritual suffering. 
the benefits of palliative care. It improves communication, provides pr- caregiver support, offers psychological and spiritual care, develops a support system to help the patient live as fully as possible, improves patient and caregiver satisfaction with care, improves overall quality of care, and not only relieves pain and suffering, but it attempts to prevent it. As geriatricians, we have to think of what our patients want and what matters to them. Palliative care provides this. End-of-life care or hospice care, what is it? Hospice care and palliative care both provide comprehensive comfort care as well as support for the family. End-of-life care can be implemented once curative treatments are no longer pursued. Hospice is provided for a person with a terminal illness whose doctor believes that they have six months or less to live if the illness runs its natural course. Hospice care, unlike palliative care, is covered by nearly all insurances, including Medicare and Medicaid. Here's a a Venn diagram illustrating how palliative care and hospice care differ and are the same. They treat life-threatening illnesses. They focus on symptom control, optimizing comfort and quality of life. They provide psychosocial support, spiritual support, and take into account patients' goals of care, how they differ. Hospice care can be implemented once a patient is deemed to have six months of life or less if their disease is to run its natural course, and also if they have opted out of curative treatment. Palliative care, on the other hand, does not require this and can be used at any stage of disease. Palliative care and end-of-life care according to the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization, showed that 53.8% of Medicare hospice patients received comfort care for 30 days or less in 2018. Of these patients, more than a quarter received hospice care for only a week or less. Population data suggests that hospice care is not sought out until very late in the process of dying. Accepting the progression of disease as a continuum and incorporating palliative care from the onset can ease the transition needed for appropriate end-of-life care.